don't overlook something saying oh this the market should know right uh, so the uh, example for this is for there are four economists standing and there's a 2000 rupee note uh, lying there so each one thinks that oh the other would have known so they don't do anything uh, one of another person ordinary uh, person comes along and he sees the 2000 rupee note he bends and picks it up and goes away uh, then these economists are saying what happened so they say oh we thought there was perfect information everybody knew what was going to happen so we thought there is no value in this must be a fake note or something like that so we didn't pick up don't do this sometimes there is value very obviously staring at you don't think that you should not pick it up just pick it up it is it could be a good 2000 rupee note or at least it's the effort of picking up a note that's all right so don't think it is too obvious everybody would have known not true everybody does not always know and even if they know it might still add value so if i uh, sometimes what belief you hold could be tested very hard like for example many of us believed uh, that uh, psu stocks cannot create value uh, but I met somebody who said PSU banks will create value and here and there. So I have luckily last year picked up a lot of PSU bank shares. Uh, sometimes your test, your your uh, beliefs will be tested, right? So you have to be very careful. Some that sometimes you have to bend with the wind, and sometimes you have to resist the wind. So it's your choice as to whether you should have added more PSU or said no. PSUs anyway will destroy wealth after two three years. In 2025, they may have destroyed wealth. This is what has happened traditionally. So you can take a view or you can take a view that uh, the earlier government did not allow the PSUs to function as independently as this government and therefore this government, uh, therefore the shares are worth buying. Or you could take a view that uh, maybe they are talking up the share for doing something so I will not be buying any view but take a view, stick to it and be ready to change your mind when that needs to be done. If some stocks are uh, cheap, they are cheap for a particular reason and that reason will be fairly obvious that is why they have remained cheap over a long period of time. This would have been true for PSUs uh, say a year ago, uh, PSUs were really cheap and people thought oh this is a rogue promoter we don't know when they will come out with a new issue so we should not buy. For example, Coal India today is 230. Uh, if the government comes out with a new issue to the public at 190, they would have effectively destroyed a lot of market cap. Rogue promoters are capable of doing this and therefore I will stay out of PSU. Perfectly right. Or say, no, I think I'll buy PSU anyway. I think Coal India is a good buy at 200 and order or 220 or 230 simply because it is giving so much dividend. But you have to be ready to understand the whole process and not just believe that oh it is cheap so i will buy sometimes they cheap uh, sometimes they are cheap and remain cheap some shares which are at a premium always remain a premium share you don't see a siemens or a cummins ever coming down or a hul ever coming down they just remain where they are and they still deliver growth nestle still delivers growth right so it is for you to decide which ones to hold what theory to do right uh, there is no one theory which works for all at all time um, getting annual reports is not so difficult today. So get the annual reports, download it, read it, you go to the website, you have the uh, analyst calls, you know when the next analyst call is going to happen, you can also attend it online. So even whether you are sitting in Dehradun, Gauhati, uh, Salem, Coimbatore, it does not really matter, right? You can attend those calls, you can come with your own views and decision. The reason to be in Nariman point to earn money is gone, right? Uh, uh, geography is now history. So you can sit there and do it, but please do it. Don't just buy it because somebody else told you. You cannot buy the conviction. So if you are convinced that the food delivery business will do well, maybe you will go and buy a Zomato or you say who will pay 200 rupees for a 100 rupee item? Nobody will buy it. That you could be right. We are never right or wrong in absolute terms. It's only in relative terms we have to decide. I remember in 1997, 96, 97, 98 maybe, uh, when the phone call used to cost 32 rupees for an uh, uh, incoming call or 32 rupees for an outgoing call and 16 rupees for an incoming call. I used to wonder who will ever use a phone, right? then prices dropped and today they, you can't imagine i don't think i know anybody who does not have a phone who is above, above 12 13 years of age 
whether they are domestic servants, whether they are drivers, whether they are CEOs, it does not matter. Completely cut through class and it is available at a ridiculously low per unit cost, right? So, you have cheap phones, you have expensive phones, you have uh, very good service providers, you got decent service providers, you got a premium package. Right, so we are not spending as much on phones as we used to. I am not spending on phones or phone bills as I used to spend in the 1980s and 90s in my office. Right, so we have it is definitely cut down cost. So, will we use uh, food delivery? Will we use uh, grocery delivery? Will we use Ola, Uber? I don't know. We have laughed at everything saying, oh, who needs this service, right? But everybody has used uh, these services. So, maybe five years from now, you could be using a Zomato or a Swiggy, uh, which you think today is no longer necessary. So, similarly, if somebody came out with a service saying, uh, if you are going from Bombay to Delhi and if you can give us a forwarding address, we will deliver your excess baggage there at uh, 100 rupees a kilo, not at 500 rupees a kilo as an airline charges. Will there be market for it? Yes. Will we look at it and say, oh, who will, how will they compete with an airline? We will come up with all our own theories uh, and then we ignore it till it becomes so significant. So, uh, don't be skeptical about anything. Don't judge on the basis of what you do. I may not use a, uh, use a food delivery service, but the, my family might be using, my daughter might be using, my daughter-in-law could be using, anybody could be using, right? So, look at who is using, is that market growing, is that market um, uh, of uh, people who are prosperous, who don't think twice about spending uh, 50 rupees on a delivery or on delivering a 30 rupee item, right? Look at that, there could be a market. So, look at all that, don't judge just on the basis of your own experience because your own experience is going to change. I didn't think um, uh, the uh, telephone penetration would be so huge so quickly, right? By 2006, 2007, maybe 2010, everybody started having it and 2022, I can't imagine anybody not having it. Very many people with multiple connections, right? Fundamental analysis works, it always works, but uh, some businesses could be in the early stage building up market share. So, if they are building up market share of 50-60%, it could be a good time to get a sneak preview and see what they are doing and put in small money and say, okay, the day they hit some uh, profitability, um, I will go and buy more of it, right? So, you can dip your uh, feet or your toes, your, then your ankle up to your knee and see whether it is working for you. So, don't discount anything totally or don't fall in love with anything totally. Some thing, somebody can come and completely break and destroy it. Remember, look at the modes, keep looking at all of that, right? So, sometimes you take your uh, eye off the ball, there is a chance that there will be a, uh, you will, there will be a mishap. Like, I don't know whether uh, if you understand enough Hindi, it says, uh, Nazar hati durghatna gati. If you take your eyes off the road, there could be an accident. So, be careful about that. All businesses are about a collection of people. So, if you are investing as a venture capitalist or a, a equity contributor to a startup, then you have to be careful. You have to ensure that the people are good friends, uh, but there is always a boss uh, and subordinate relationship, right? All those things should also be in place. So, look at all that, look at the people, look at the ideas, look at what is happening. And uh, that will give you uh, better hope than looking at just the numbers. So, look at the numbers, yes, but look at the other things also. Similarly, for a bigger business, see the business, see the business, whether it you admire that business, don't just go by numbers. So, if you think it's a hotel business or it's an airline business or it's a leisure business, see whether there is enough traffic in that, right? Whether enough people are uh, going for that. If it's a very expensive hotel, are people staying there? Go once in a while to check out that place and see whether how is the occupancy. Check out once in a while, right? So, some of these, ultimately you are investing in businesses. So, check whether these businesses are working. Once in a while, take a, do a dipstick.